HMSDC. Welcome to Expo 2020. And uh, today's keynote, uh, we have a special treat for you today. I'll be speaking here with uh, MVP Russell Westbrook. You know, Mr. Westbrook is a Long Beach, California native, currently starts as starting point guard for the Houston Rockets. Russell's basketball career is one for the storybooks. He's won numerous awards and received accolades from some of basketball's greatest legends. Though he is indeed an all-star on the court, he also shines brightly off the court and is one of our own here within HMSDC. You know, Russell started the Why Not Foundation in 2012, which is dedicated to inspiring the lives of children, teaching them to never give up, and empowering them to ask why not. And so in 2015, Russell was also recognized for his philanthropic efforts when he received NBA season-long Community Assist Award, a very special honor indeed from the NBA. As chairman of Russell Westbrook Enterprises, Russell brings together his relentless work ethic and his earnest pursuit to positively impact his communities. Russell Westbrook Enterprises connects Russell with the wider business world and is a vehicle to help Russell positively influence communities by providing product services, resources, and employment opportunities. So certainly a stellar start there. Russell, thank you for joining us and spending time with us today, and I'll open it up to you. So welcome. Yeah, thank you, Archie. Uh, thank you for the intro. Uh, thank you to Ingrid and the whole HMSDC for just having me a member and allowing me to kind of, you know, talk today. Um, hello, everyone via Zoom. I know it's different, but hello to everyone uh, via Zoom, wherever you guys are. Appreciate your time. Um, but uh, if you guys don't know, my name is Russell Westbrook. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I was born and raised in, in Los Angeles. Uh, I went to UCLA, left school in 2008 and that's the same year i started uh my enterprise which is called russell westbrook enterprise um i felt it's always important to kind of build your brand obviously while you're playing but have something that you can lean on uh, when you're done playing uh, and my main goal in doing that is to find ways to be able to build a brand but also su support my community um because i feel like that's where my legacy lies uh, it's not on the court but it's also what i do in the community for my people um and that's a small intro for myself but thank you guys for having me all right well russell thank you for that uh, background and uh, again welcome so we will uh, we'll get right to it so as you might think most people know about your career with the nba um, but individuals may not know about your business pursuits. So tell us a little more about those business efforts and what you're doing um, kind of outside of your playing with the Houston Rockets. Yeah, so um, like I mentioned, uh, Russell Westbrook Enterprise, uh, I, I started in 2008, uh, kind of the same year I got drafted. I wanted to be able to, once I get in playing in the league, find something and find ways to be able to uh, impact in different ways um, and find a vertical that kind of resonates with me. Um, and I, I believe, you know, us as athletes, uh, we can use our platforms and use our, uh, our brand opportunities that we have uh, to be able to expand um, our business outside of um, a, a basketball. So with those experiences and those partnerships, I find ways to be able to just educate myself and understand how important it is to be able to uh, know more about a brand, know how it's ran, know who runs it, know the ins and out of the business, um, to be able to kind of educate my own self and my team to be able to uh, be here now. And, and, and today, um, as an arm of my RWE, I have um, created uh, Russell Westbrook Digital, um, which is a best in class uh, pro programmatic media buying solution. And I'm super excited about it. Um, and just thankful that I was able to kind of educate myself along the way to be able to understand how important it is to be able to, um, to do something. Excellent. Good news to, to hear. Now, we have a lot of our HMSDC MBEs on the phone, and uh, we know you're a member of HMSDC. So tell us um, how your membership has benefited you and your company. Um, for one, I'm truly thankful and, and, and blessed to be a, a member of the HMSDC. I think it's an opportunity that I don't take for granted. Uh, being in, a member has 
you know, gave me uh, a crazy amount of exposure uh, within the industry. Um, it also has shown us, a, you know, just my team, a network of and having access to other MBEs that obviously I wouldn't be able to have before. So I'm definitely, um, it, you know, thankful and blessed to be able to do that and, and be able to collaborate with some other MBEs as well. Perfect. So now you are a supporter of minority owned businesses and um, are looking to invest in other minority owned businesses. So tell us why that is important to you as a business owner. Um, I think it's very important. Um, I think for two reasons, I think uh, to be able to, number one, I think it's, it's to be able to support, you know, my community um, and lead by example. I believe that um, just in my position and my platform, it's important that I be able to do that. Um, and try to do it consistently. Um, it's, it's important to be able to give also uh, minority owned businesses a resource to be able to, you know, scale their biz businesses up, um, which is very, very important, especially in today's society um, and hire, they can use hire people in their communities and find ways and different resources to be able to do that. So um, I think those are, for me, the two, two most important things. So on that same vein, uh, give us a little bit of the scope of your business. You know, how many people you have, uh, what kind of opportunities, who you might use to uh, help you with your business as far as outside companies and the like? Yes. So my team, um, just my internal team, my RWE team is uh, at the moment, you know, not that big, but my, I, I really, um, I have probably about um, five or six employees, I would say. Um, but one thing I, I, I very much do all the time is, um, find different people, um, that I may know inside, um, just my own network of people, um, just looking to people that I trust as advisors, uh, that can help me along the way, because I think that's very important as you kind of open your businesses up and open enterprise up and, um, be open to, uh, talking to people that have done it before that understand the businesses, they understand my goals uh, and understanding the things that I want to do, uh, you know, for my community. Well, good. And then um, I guess we have a question here about how does, how did basketball and say your time at UCLA and now with the NBA prepare you for the challenges of owning and starting your own business? Um, I believe uh, obviously basketball is, is a team sport. So I believe that, uh, being a team player is huge in, in in the business world, whether you're collaborating or, or finding ways and other partnerships to be able to do things um, inside your business. Um, I believe it also taught me uh, to be the leader uh, of my own team and understanding what that entails and running my own side of team to make sure that um, my team is aligned um, along the way as well. So then um, let's keep on that same vein. Um, if you had to think about three things that are important to you and you believe every business owner should know or consider to be successful, you know, give us your thoughts around those and um, any others that you might have. Um, kind of looking for those little pearls of wisdom, if you will. Yeah, I think um, this is something that was, I think, just difficult for me for many reasons because I, I am a guy that likes to just have my hands in so many different things and want to get involved in so many different ways. So I think that the number one thing is kind of finding your niche, finding that niche of kind of where you want to be and, and what you want to do. Um, the second thing I would say is um, knowing your demographic. I believe you knowing the people that you're trying to reach and trying to, um, you know, help or connect with. Um, and lastly, I would say just internally with your own team, trust. Um, and be be loyal to them and, and, and help them give them all the resources to be able to get the job done that you, you kind of ask them. Now, based on our scope here with HMSDC, can you um, let us know, you work with any government agencies or any corporations in particular? And, you know, how is that uh, going for you? Say that again. Have you worked with any corporations or anyone here in the local government to promote your business or work with your business? And no, not um, as of yet, but uh, definitely in, in, in the process of figuring that out. 
Okay. So we've got a question here from the um, from the audience. Uh, the question is: Are you taken seriously as an entrepreneur because you're so popular as a basketball player? Yeah, I I, I take it just as much as I take it as a challenge to be uh, one of the best to play basketball. I take it very very seriously. Um, to uh, be taken serious in the business world and as an entrepreneur uh, because I won't be able to obviously play basketball for my entire life. And it's something that I try to make sure I educate myself, which is the most important thing so that I know exactly what's going on. I can speak on it. I can uh, be knowledgeable on exactly what I'm doing uh, in whatever space in the business world. Um, so I take it very seriously uh, to make sure that when it is an opportunity to be able to, to speak on it, to be able to talk about it, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Excellent. So with that, um, another question has come in. Where do, you, where do you see yourself and then your business um, in five years? Um, you know, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> internally, i just having this conversation of kind of where I want the business to go um, in five years. Uh, and I believe for me, I don't know if there's a, a level where I'm trying to get to, but uh, my biggest goal and just internally is always to impact and inspire as many people as possible um, in all different verticals. Um, my community and uh, is the most important thing to me, and that's the kind of centerpiece of, of my enterprise. And um, my job is to continue to, to stay on you know, go at all times to be able to keep inspiring, helping it, helping businesses, helping people in my community to the uh, most. And, and, and in five years, hopefully I can look back and be proud of um, the things that you know, we've done as a team and um, that I've done, um, you know, it's running an enterprise. So another question has come in is, um, will Russell Westbrook Enterprises uh, expand into I guess further in the Houston area and then perhaps bigger into the Midwest or other parts of the country. I believe uh, just my enterprise is global. And I believe that's where me as a, as an athlete kind of comes into play is where I've been lucky and blessed to be able to have a platform where um, different parts of uh, our country and in the world, actually um, um, people kind of know, the name, and I think that's the, the biggest thing for me is a bit to use that platform, um, whether it's obviously in Houston or, like you mentioned, the Midwest and find ways and, and businesses and people um, of each community to be able to impact uh, and businesses and be able to help them along the way as well. Well, how do you find the business environment here in Houston? Any challenges you've seen? Um, I believe the only no real challenge. The only challenge that I had, it was, I just was new to Houston. Um, and that was that, but, um, nothing in understanding the demographic, understanding, uh, where, um, uh, what businesses need more help. And, you know, my team has done an amazing job of kind of presenting me and making me sure that and understanding exactly what's going on in different businesses. And um, other than that, no kind of real challenges, um, as it pertains to that. Now, I guess a question has come in. Is there a reason that you chose to go into digital marketing space as your first venture? Um, I, I was in the process of um, just me and my team and figuring out exactly which space and trying to find ways and, and to be able to um, get into the market. And um, I was lucky enough to be able to um, meet um, a friend of mine that's that that has a that's in the that's in the space, and I was able to understand it, and educate myself, and educate my team on how amazing it can be, um, just in, in different ways to be able to help. You know, my community is my number one thing, and um, um, I was super excited about it. I was intrigued about it, um, and I went forward with it, and I'm you know super excited to be able to be in it. Well, with that, can you uh, take an opportunity to tell us a little more about your foundation, what it is, what it does, what it's, uh, who it services? Yeah, so um, 
I think you mentioned earlier, Archie, just my foundation started um, back in kind of 2012. And um, my first kind of um, reason to start it was uh, centered around education. And education to me is, I believe, a huge pillar in our society and our world that you can be able to um, use to kind of educate our, our youth, educate our underserved communities and our underserved you know, children as well. And I wanted to be able to uh, use that as, as a start. Um, and over the years, um, you know, I've focused and focused strictly on education. And within the last couple of years, I've expanded just the foundation and um, in different verticals um, as it pertains to um, helping and serving our underserved communities um, through um, trying to help, whether it's through job creation, whether it's through obviously education. Um, and another vertical that I've kind of really expanded on is, is the mental wellness and mental health side. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at now with the foundation and finding different, whether it's different partners and companies to be able to collaborate with that I'm along those same lines or finding ways to be able to help our underserved communities, underserved people, um, and find ways to, to kind of impact and inspire them all. So with that on the foundation, how can we, um, how can someone get more information and, or get involved uh, to help? Yeah, I mean, we, um, we have a website and I'll, I'll make sure I'll get it out and have my team get it to whoever needs it. Um, and we definitely are very, very active. And I, I challenge my team always to be very active in finding something and, uh, and doing things to be able to help and, and impact so many uh, people as possible, um, whatever it is. So there's so many different things that I'm working on continuously um, in the community because I feel uh, just giving back is um, it's easy to say, but it's, it's, it's very difficult to do and, and do it at a, at a rate where you really want to help and impact and change a community and change, um, you know, our system and, and educating our people is, is super important to me. So, um, there are things that we're doing consistently and always, and I'll make sure our, we can get the information out to as many people as possible. Well, good. Well, with that vein, you meet a lot of people. You know, can you give us an idea of someone who may have inspired you along the way? Yeah, you know, I think initially my inspiration, um, I think starts with me, starts just at home with my parents uh, because they, kind of always told me to just educate myself. If you want to do something, if you want to inspire and help people, make sure you educate yourself and, and know exactly, uh, you know, the things that you want to do and, and go do it. And that's kind of where uh, the mentality comes from, the, the why not. And that's why uh, I named my foundation kind of the why not foundation. Uh, and it's something that me and, a few of my friends kind of just came up with this mentality of, listen, you know, why not us? Why not you? Why not be the person to be able to change uh, the world? Why not be the person to be able to do the things you've kind of put uh, your, your mind to? And um, I've been extremely, you know, blessed and thankful to be able to call and get advice from so many different people on, on so many different levels and uh, been inspired by uh, some of the most powerful people in the world. And I'm just thankful and I take all information and everything again to be able to help, um, you know, my business and help my enterprise uh, along the way. So I know like myself, I chose a, a corporate career as a sort of a piece and some of my kids are along the same vein, but um, a little differently. Do you think it's important that we teach kids to consider entrepreneurship as a career path or as an alternative? Um, I believe that uh, it's very important. I believe that our children is our future and our youth is our future. Um, and I think the number one thing for me is making sure that we educate our, our youth and our children because as long as they're educated, um, they can kind of navigate their way, whether it's in entrepreneurship, whether it's in, um, in the health space, whatever space they want to go in, um, even if it was just sports, at least they're educated and educate themselves on um, the business side of things um, so that it, when there is opportunity to be able to come apart, uh, they're ready to be able to take it on 
um, and understand exactly, you know, to, to how to operate in it. Now, here's an unusual question, and one that you can ponder on. If, if you could have dinner with one person in history, who would it be, and what would be your first question to them? Hey. Uh, we, I never had asked that before. Hmm. If I could have dinner, first question. Um, you know, I think just right now, top of my head, I would probably say, um, just as where I'm at in my space of kind of the last year or so, and obviously everything that's kind of going on in our society, I would say right now, I would say Martin Luther King. Um, and I would say, I probably have a ton of questions, but my number one thing is, uh, just how, and you know, how would at least I would go by just helping as many people and getting as many people to follow and follow my lead as I try to kind of change our society, our communities um, at the highest level. And obviously, um, he's done that for so many people and so many different people for us today. So I think that's kind of where I would um, where I would go with it. Well, good. And, and so. With that and where you are currently, you know, how can we help you? How can the HMSDC family sort of continue to support you? Well, number one, RGJ, the HMSDC has helped me by having me a member. And I'm, I'm thankful for that because just people in my position and, and being an athlete and, and taking very ser taken seriously um, is the number one thing for me. Um, and along those, way, along those lines, um, I think just um, supporting and, and just give me the resources because I want to be able, like I mentioned, just educate my myself and educate my team and know um, that if you guys are helping and give me an opportunity to do something, um, I want to make sure that you are proud and, and thankful to be able to have me as a member. So I would say that's the biggest thing I would just ask for on the support side. So with that, tell us about some of the life lessons that um – so your parents or your dad may have taught you and that you're now teaching your children um, that make them interested in your career or in following your footsteps? Um, I would say just um, just a few things. It's always respecting, respecting other people, um, being respectful of other people's time and energy um, and being loyal. I think that's something that's been implemented in me, um, you know, from my parents and something that, I can pass along to my to my children is, is being loyal um, to your team and to people that are obviously loyal to you um, and keeping a close knit a close knit group of friends because um, I think it's important to be able to have a group of friends around you that that can also tell you when you're wrong but I can also tell you the things and um, that you need to improve on um, that can lift you up as well. Um, so I think those are some important things that, um, just, um, as I think about this business and kind of everything and whatever it is that my kids are wanting to do as they get older, uh, as they're keeping those things in mind, um, as they kind of navigate their way through their own life. So then what do you think as both individuals and then as entrepreneurs, um, we can do to drive so the social change we want to see in the world? Um, I believe that everybody has a part. I believe that um, each individual business entrepreneur, whatever it is, has a part where they can close, whether it's that wealth gap, that financial gap, that health gap, whatever it is, uh, to be able to impact, you know, their own communities in each way. Um, I believe sometimes we kind of just trying to, we have this broad scope of how we can change very quickly. And I've learned just personally, um, you know, it takes time and it's going to take a lot of time as we continue to, um, as we see the world changes daily, um, to continue to, to be able to uh, take our own personal time and find ways to be able to help, whether it's, you know, in a community, whether it's to support a, a, a black owned minority owned business, um, whatever it is, I believe that we all have a part and I believe that if we all feel that way, I believe 
we can make a lot of change. And uh, I truly feel that, uh, you know, that we, we, we can definitely do that. So along that same vein, as a small business owner, entrepreneur, what kind of advice would you give us on creating social and economic equity among small businesses? Um, I would say uh, it's obviously um, to me, well now and obviously it's been, can be difficult for certain businesses and certain um, um, small businesses now. Uh, but I think just curating more equity and more uh, for your business um, is, I think what I mentioned earlier, just, just staying in front of your niche because I think it's important, uh, whatever it is and whatever business you're in, uh, finding your niche and finding ways to be able to obviously uh, to, to scale your business up and doing it the right way. Um, my one thing I, I've always told myself and my team is I don't like to skip steps. Like I like to be able to um, take every step. If it takes me longer uh, to be able to get something, um, I'm, I'm okay with that. Just um, finding ways and going through each impossible step and exerting each energy and each way to be able to um, kind of make sure that this business and um, is, is where I want it and can be scaled up the way I want it to be. Now, Russell, as we uh, start to wrap up, any closing thoughts you'd like to share with uh, the HMSDC family? Um, just once again, I just I'm thankful, and you know, I, I thank you guys just for having me as a member. Um, and you know, um, that's the biggest thing for me. Just I'm ex super just excited about an opportunity to be able to be a member of the HMSDC is something that. Um, you know, I've, I've talked about with my team and being an opportunity to be able to um, to be a part of I'm just thankful for that. Um, and I thank everyone that's on the Zoom and who's all involved. You know, Ingrid, thank you, and whole HMSDC. And um, so I appreciate you guys just, you know, listening to me um, along the way. So thank you. All right. Well, Russell, thank you for those insights. We certainly wish you continued success both on the court and in your business pursuits. Um, you know, very appreciative of the work you do in the community at large and, of course, helping the Houston Rockets be a successful franchise at this stage. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that you're successful and you can help us be successful as a role model to young folk and other business enterprises around the, around the community here. And uh, as we really strive for equity, here in Houston and in America in general. Um, so appreciate your time and uh, your efforts there. And uh, we look forward to seeing you down the road here and uh, keeping you as part of one of the um, HMSDC members. And thank you again for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Archie. So for everyone that's tuned in today, we appreciate you joining us for this uh, session. Thank Russell again for his time. and. Uh, sponsorship of uh, HMSTC. And we'd like to invite you all to stay tuned as we um, open up our 2020 Rigel Awards. So stay tuned. We'll be back with you in a few moments. As the mayor of the most diverse city in the country, I am pleased to welcome you to the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council's Expo 2020. We know how important it is to create opportunities for small businesses across the greater Houston area. It helps to create jobs, strengthen our communities, and contribute to the innovation and diversity of our city. As mayor and as a former business owner, I understand the challenges and rewards of growing a business, employing others, and contributing to the community. So whether you are participating in Expo as a corporate exhibitor, government agency, minority business enterprise, or small business owner, I thank you. You are doing your part to help Houston get back on its feet by reimagining your businesses, reconnecting with your customers, and by doing so, we will rise stronger together. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Expo 2020 Day One Rigel Awards. The theme for Expo 2020 is reimagine, reconnect, rise stronger. 
which underscores the important role Expo plays in developing, building, and growing minority business enterprises by connecting them to corporate government and educational entities to do business. Expo affords MBEs a platform to identify business opportunities and showcase their expertise and innovations to both local and international markets. The corporations and minority business owners we will recognize today exemplify the best in minority business development. Thank you for taking the time today to celebrate differences and the mutual value that makes the work of all involved in minority business development truly impactful. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize members of the HMSDC Board of Directors. Vice Chairman James Brownrigg, Vice President and General Manager, Turner Construction Company. Treasurer Eileen Perillo, Vice VP Finance Unconventionals, Shell Exploration and Production Company. Secretary David Wilson, Managing Director, Resources and Technology Consulting, Accenture. Anthony Curtis, Business Development Manager, TechSync Technologies. Keith Davis, Publisher, Vasque Media Group. Tim Finley, Chief Financial Officer, Port Houston. Andy Icken, Chief Development Officer, City of Houston. Bill Keyes, Global Logistics Director, Floor Corporation. The Dean Bazaar, Chief Executive Officer, Custom Technology Solutions. Paula Mendoza, President, Possible Missions. John Slanina, Chief Procurement Officer, Centerpoint Energy. Troy Taylor, President, Taylor Construction Management. Calvin Wright, Chief Procurement Officer, University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. And last but certainly not least, Ingrid Robinson, HMSDC President. Throughout the year, HMSDC facilitates connections through a series of developmental programs and events designed to support and grow minority women and small businesses. At Expo, we seek to share industry information and opportunities, provide invaluable introductions to key business decision makers, and introduce them to resource organizations that can help them grow their businesses. Before we go further, I would like to thank our sponsors which made this event possible. Corporate Platinum Sponsors, BP, Chevron, ExxonMobil, Shell Oil Company. Our MBE Platinum Sponsors, Computer Decisions, SNR Creative, Twice Media Productions, Virtual Fusions, Worldwide Technology. Our gold sponsors, Motiva Enterprises, United Airlines. Our MBE gold sponsors, Daily Thermetrics, Taylor Construction Management, Wiseman Consultants. Our silver sponsors, ConocoPhillips, Icon Information Consultants, Phillips 66, Port Houston. Our MBE Silver Sponsor, GHG Corporation. Corporate Bronze Sponsors, Centerpoint Energy, Direct Energy, Intergy, Floor Corporation, HEB, Houston Community College Systems, J.E. Dunn Construction, Metropolitan Transit Authority, or Metro, Turner Construction, Vistra Energy. Our MBE Bronze Sponsors, K Business Solutions, Myrtle Consulting Group. Our Media Sponsors, Butler Wiseman, Houston Business Journal, Houston Defender, KPRC Channel 2, Minority Business News Texas, Subcontractors USA. Let's give our sponsors a virtual round of applause.
Rigel star is approximately 10 million years old and is the seventh brightest star in the Orion constellation, often referred to as the Hunter Orion. It can be seen by the naked eye in the evening sky from November to March. The Rigel star is 6,000 times hotter than the Earth's sun, which gives it its beautiful blue color. Rigel is a rare blue supergiant star that shines with the luminosity of approximately 40,000 times that of the sun. There are other Rigel stars that are among us and much closer to home. These Rigels radiate characteristics that allow them to stand out among the other stars. During good economic times and bad times, these Rigels have remained luminous. The Houston Minority Supplier Development Council would like to present the Rigel Awards to those minority business enterprises and corporate leaders who have outshined all of the others in their commitment to minority business development. Now, it's time to officially name our brightest stars, the Rigel Star Awards. It is indeed an honor for me to announce the recipient of the 2020 Supplier of the Year Award, Class 2. The purpose of the Supplier of the Year Award is to recognize outstanding suppliers within the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council and to encourage a more competitive and successful business environment for all council members. In the category of annual sales from 1 to 10 million, the Minority Business Enterprise 2020 Supplier of the Year Award goes to Henico Engineering and Consulting. Alex Dautola, President and CEO. Since the inception, Henico has established a reputation for its expertise and ability in provide services for marine and industrial project types. Upwards of 90% of the company's incoming work comes from returning clients and referrals. This speaks highly of the quality of work produced for satisfied clients. Please join me in congratulating Henneco Engineering and Consulting. One funny thing about me is that when I'm not working, if there's music around me, I love to dance. Customer service is very important to us as a business. That's why we try to reach out to our customers at least once in a quarter to solicit feedback from them on how we're delivering our projects. We want to see things not just from the way we see them, but also from the perspective of our customers. So for us, customer service is really important and we don't want to joke with it. This year, we've implemented uh, a remote you know, working system that works really well, uh, not just for our team members, but also on our projects. Right now, we have a system that allows all our clients to log in and see the progress that we're making on projects not just with the schedule, but also cost-wise. That has saved us a lot of money, and also our clients are really happy about that. Strategic teaming has become a proven way for MBEs to gain capacity and strengthen the value they bring to their customers. The winners of this year's Strategic Teaming Award forged a joint venture partnership in 1993 to better serve the diverse business climate of commercial real estate, maximizing exposure in local, national, and international clients on teaming contracts. This partnership works as equals. The MBE firm earns 25% of their revenue when the major company partner generates the opportunity and leads the assignment. Likewise, the MBE earns 75% of the revenues when it generates the opportunity and leads the assignment. For these reasons, please help me congratulate Arvo Realty and Cashman and Wakefield, Texas for being selected for the 2020 Strategic Teaming Award. You know, when we first met, uh, it started off on a, a business uh, 
business perspective, right? We were all firm and stern, and we wanted to make sure we did everything right, and that we that we had a uh, a good partnership. And then that grew into a real friendship. Ed Riven and I came to the same conclusion about 25 years ago. It would be good to have a, a partnership. And so we teamed up at that point and have been in partnership providing real estate services to our clients now for um, over 20 years. In commercial real estate, we've uh, introduced some new techniques we believe in the marketing that has made our team very successful, such as having sealed bid, bid sales for our clients on certain assets and drive the competition so that the price can go up, sometimes even a, ahead of appraised value. And then on one particular deal I'm really proud of, we actually held an open house on a commercial property and brought all the prospective buyers we thought together at one time. and they saw each other and saw the amount of interest in acquiring this property and it raised the prices that we were able to yield from that property. One is microwave responses, being extremely quick with our responses. And then second is to try to anticipate what challenges or opportunities our clients may be envisioning. Is the combination of the two teams working together and with that combination, we have been able to fulfill the requirements that clients and potential clients need. It's only human to care for those we love and also help light their way. It's why last year, Chevron invested over $10 billion to bring affordable, reliable, ever cleaner energy to America. The first award I will present is truly special as it is designed by the world-renowned African-American artist, Tony Sherman, who will share with us his design process of the unique HMSDC Helping Hand Award. Hello, my name is Tony Sherman. I'm a former Texas Art Commissioner for the state of Texas. And some of you know that I'm an artist, a sculptor, I do a little writing. So I was um, asked to explain uh, what this Helping Hand Award is all about. So let me just give you an idea, a little background. Some years ago, Dick Heapner and I uh, sat down at a table in the HMBC office. And uh, he started explaining that uh, he was appreciative of all of the help that he's getting from some of the big corporations. Um, and as we talked, I get images in my head and uh, I ask, uh, what is it that you're interested in doing? He said, well, there's something about creating an award that we can give to them for all their help. Um, and so within a few minutes, really, I had done a sketch uh, uh, that was on the table and uh, showed it, turned it around and showed it to him. And he said, that's it. What the original sketch was all about was a hand, a large hand with lots of people climbing up that hand and uh, in different capacities. And uh, it showed, and uh, he was interested in showing uh, how they were being helped by this one giant hand. The hand was a pretty good size, and uh, we used it for several years, as a matter of fact. But after a while, uh, I came up with a different idea. The different idea had to do with a softer touch, not just a big hand, but a hand, but at the same time, something that gave you a feeling of peace and appreciation. And so this is the award that I finally came up with that uh, explains why uh, the image now is a bird in the hand, but one of a peaceful dove, uh, showing the appreciation that uh, the council is, is appreciative of the help that the, that the large corporations are giving to the smaller minority um, corporations. So that's the genesis of it. Uh, I'm honored, uh, as always, uh, and, and pleasure to produce something like this 
uh, for the council. And uh, this is the Helping Hand Award. Thank you. Now that we understand the artist's perspective, I'd like to share with you the criteria for which MBEs nominate candidates for this award. The Helping Hand Award recognizes a person who, in the opinion of MBEs, has done the most to assist MBEs throughout the year and exemplify the HMSDC Connect pillar. Competition for this award is always tough. The recipient of this year's Helping Hand Awards advocacy extends throughout the community to include MBEs, vendors, and partner organizations. This person is always willing to help others and has earned the respect of peers and became a role model in the field of supplier diversity. Please join me in recognizing the recipient of this year's award, Sharonda Murray of Metropolitan Transit Authority of Houston. Everyone, please show Sharonda your appreciation with a rousing round of applause. I absolutely get a joy out of knowing that someone can land an opportunity because of my influence, because of my words of encouragement on how to better your business. And once you do that one, two, three step, your steps are ordered, the opportunities are there, you've landed a contract, you've landed a PO. So I get a joy out of helping others and especially knowing that their lives can be better financially uh, and they'll just feel better about themselves. They'll be even encouraged even the more to say, I did it with Metro, so I know I can do it with Port, with City of Houston. Just knowing, giving them the confidence in knowing that I can do this thing. If I did it with one company, especially a company like Metro, uh, where it's a marathon and not a sprint to do work with us, just the joy of knowing that I've helped somebody. Hey, if you know me, you know I'm a people person. I'm genuine and I absolutely love to see others excel. I love to help. And just to know that you being awarded for something that comes so easy to you in my sleep, I should say, uh, is a joy. So HMSDC, Ingrid, the gang, thank you so very much. I'm, I'm very thankful, humbled, honored, and very appreciative to each of you. So again, thank you so much. I'm excited. We believe it is appropriate for minority business enterprises of HMSDC to nominate and decide which individuals and corporations we feel are making the most sincere effort to assist in expanding opportunities for MBEs while exemplifying the HMSDC advocate pillar. This award recognizes the individual whose efforts have reflected the highest commitment to minority business development. Passion, commitment, innovation, and excitement surround this champion's work in supplier diversity. The winner of the Advocate of the Year Award went to their executive vice president and gave a strong recommendation to give an MBE an opportunity. She puts her own reputation on the line for MBEs and it is because of this level of commitment that we are happy to recognize the 2020 Advocate of the Year Award, Charlene Ucker. Hi everybody, I'm Charlene Ucker, Manager of Sustainability and Supplier Diversity at Enbridge Energy a midstream energy company with offices across North America, including right here in Houston. We're pretty early in our supplier diversity journey and quickly approaching one year as a corporate member of HMSDC. Thank you so much for this nomination. I'm truly humbled by it. Back in January, I met a number of you in person at the HMSDC annual meeting. And that's where I also met Dr. Kristen Bazzotti. We had a great conversation and I immediately thought of a number of areas where we might be able to use her company, International Intercultural, to learn more about the cultural perspectives that shape us as a company, a community, and a world. And that conversation led to us engaging Kristen for an event back in September where she presented on allyship and 100 years of women voting. It was very well received. Although Enbridge has a long way to go still on our supplier diversity initiative, I know that with the relationships that we forge here with the amazing network of HMSDC, MBEs, and corporate members, we'll continue to succeed together. Thank you again so much for this nomination. I'm truly humbled by it.
The final award to be presented by the NBEIC recognizes the major corporation or government agency on the local level that, in the opinion of minority business owners, has the best evidence its commitment to minority business development. This year's winner maintains quality with focus on capacity building for MBEs. This company has had a formal award-winning mentor protege program in place for more than 25 years. To date, they have mentored 43 suppliers and was recognized by the Texas Comptroller's Office, HMSCC, and WBEA. The first protege of the program was Cunye Electric, an HMSCC member. This company views HMSCC as an integral partner and value component of the program's success for over two decades. We're pleased to announce the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center as the 2020 Local Corporation of the Year Award. Congratulations on the behalf of all MBEs of HMSDC. MD Anderson Cancer Center is the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. A lot of people don't realize that. We have always been part of UT. So we started out in a little tiny building in Midtown, Houston. We've now since branched out outside of just being in the Texas Medical Center. Uh, we have affiliations around the world and we have a number of Houston area locations. We're also going to be expanding. We are one of the core agencies, there's three of us that are helping with the TMC3, which is the city within the city. So the Texas Medical Center is a city within Houston and the new TMC3 is a city within the Texas Medical Center. And so there's a lot of growth, a lot of opportunity coming down the pike. Supplier diversity is important for many different reasons. It helps with leveling the playing field. It helps open opportunities that weren't there yesterday and to bring the world forward into a better balance. Two of the areas that MD Anderson has that we've had in place for the 30 years we've had our program was because we are a state agency and we also receive federal funds. So both have programs. And so it's important to us that we are compliant. We have a very uh, large responsibility of our accountability. And so therefore, those are two of the drivers with MD Anderson. In the last couple of months, the president of our company has started a diversity executive task force. And so that is something that drives the responsibility for hiring to have more of a diverse base within our executive team, as well as oversight of our hub program. So we're very pleased to have that balance and to really have better opportunities. We also are doing more responsibility on behalf of the executives over the hub spend to see that we are capturing those opportunities within the actual department levels. So that's another exciting thing. More than ever, the world needs disinfectants, face masks, surgical gowns, and IV bags. We've increased our production of the raw materials they're made from and reconfigured our operations to make medical grade hand sanitizer for the first time. Because everything we can do to help those on the front lines is nothing compared to what they're doing to help all of us. Our next set of special awards recognize those corporate members who truly walk the talk by reporting the largest increase in annual expenditures with HMSDC certified MBEs. It is those that truly recognize that corporations not only report their annual spend totals with MBEs, but report some of the largest overall MBE expenditures of any HMSDC corporate member. These three companies put their money where their mouth is with combined spend of over $300 million in expenditures with HMSDC MBEs in 2019. We are excited to recognize the 2020 Minority Business Development winners, Shell Oil Company, with spend of $143 million. So I think this is an unbelievable opportunity to really highlight the fact that everybody needed to pivot. This is what we call a new normal environment for everyone. And 
I think this is a time that I'm really proud to be a part of such a phenomenal organization as Shell because we have still been creative and we've been bold in this new need to pivot. So what we've done, we've been focused on having what we call bold actions and bold moves and we've been changing the traditional way that we do things in the organization where we have a smaller team that's meeting in what we call a work stream and they, we, we put together this special a linear focus work team that exists for about four weeks and we're being very, very focused on being able to discuss um, opportunities that's in what we call a, a funnel pipeline. And we are engaging with organizations, partnering organizations like HMSDC to ensure that suppliers that are members of those representative groups are familiar and they're getting an opportunity to showcase uh, their services and the products that they have that can help us to, to support some of the needs in these projects that we have um, in the organization. And it's just been fascinating because right now in four weeks, we've uncovered more than 80, 80 opportunities that's happening in the pipeline. So we're unbelievably pleased and happy to be a part of that type of work stream. Our second recipient of the 2020 Minority Business Development Award is ExxonMobil with a spend of $105 million. For almost 50 years, supply diversity has been an area of focus for ExxonMobil. In 2019, we achieved a milestone of spending more than $3 billion with diverse and small businesses globally. Specifically, ExxonMobil's HMSDC certified supplier spend increased by 35% from 2018 to 2019 and the number of HMSDC certified suppliers in our network grew by 20%, which not only indicates increased usage of MBEs, but increased capacity of MBEs currently in our network. At ExxonMobil, our supplier diversity team works closely with procurement professionals to ensure diverse suppliers are included on as many bids as possible. Simply introducing competition into the supply chain has proven to decrease overall costs and increase innovation and efficiency. Additionally, while supplier diversity sits within a centralized procurement department, our teams have engaged directly with various business lines and other non-traditional departments within ExxonMobil, such as commercial trading, treasurers, law, and commercial sales to support diversity and the use of MBEs. On behalf of ExxonMobil, thank you for this award, which recognizes what we do every day to support minority businesses. As HMSDC board chair, I look forward to continuing to support the great work of Ingrid and the HMSDC team to promote and expand the number and capability of talented HMSDC certified minority businesses. Our third and final recipient of the 2020 Minority Business Development Award is BP, with spend of $52.5 million. Thank you, HMSDC, for recognizing BP again this year. We're always pleased to learn that others see us and are prepared to congratulate our hard work. So on behalf of our supplier diversity team, procurement professionals, and the many employees representing our businesses around the world, thank you. There are many ways of doing the business of supplier diversity effectively, but I think there are just two that allow us to stand out. Number one, our stakeholder engagement. The messaging and communication around supplier inclusion begins at the top, and that accountability gives us all the leverage we need to be successful. And number two, we prioritize the ability to maintain touch points with our suppliers. Not only understanding our existing supplier base, but we continue to cultivate new supplier relationships with companies that are in strategic categories. That helps us move the needle. So again, thank you. Thank you, HMSDC. Stay safe, everyone. Our next award was established to recognize and encourage innovative practices in supplier diversity. This year's Innovation Award winner has engaged employees beyond procurement for several years to further the reach of supplier diversity's message. They have established an advocate network of more than 400 employees. 
Their advocate network represents all of the procurement business lines and category family organizations and is charged with establishing goals, identifying opportunities, reporting commodity specific results, and engaging in tier one and tier two suppliers. Please join me in congratulating our 2020 recipient of the Innovation Award, ExxonMobil. HMSDC, thank you for this recognition in supply diversity innovation. We often talk about how diversity in the supply chain brings innovation to the business. Therefore, being innovative in our supply diversity practices is a perfect alignment. There are two innovative practices that we believe are key to driving the success of a supplier diversity program and directly impacts expanding opportunities for diverse suppliers at ExxonMobil. One practice is related to people and the other is related to process. The people practice that sets us apart is our expansive advocate network, which has grown to almost 500 individuals in 2020, about 30% growth, and includes both procurement and business line professionals. Our advocates are key to keeping supplier diversity as a priority within their teams. They identify opportunities for including diverse suppliers in commercial activity and mentor suppliers. They also participate in local diverse council events such as this and encourage our primary suppliers to use minority businesses and report their tier two spend. Our advocates expand the reach of the supplier diversity team of ExxonMobil tenfold. We rely on their passion to magnify awareness of diverse suppliers across the company, provide opportunities for diverse suppliers to compete for our business, and help diverse suppliers build the capabilities that they need to succeed at ExxonMobil. The other innovative practice, the one related to process, is our annual category family assessment. This assessment involves working with each category family, also known as commodity group, to identify commercial activities and initiatives for inclusion of diverse suppliers. The assessments also help each category family establish targets for diverse spend for the year because what gets measured gets done. The supplier diversity team supports the procurement team with identifying and vetting qualified diverse suppliers, then together with category family advocates, reviews progress on targets and outcomes of commercial activities through quarterly scorecards and semi-annual discussions. This process ensures that diverse supplier opportunities are part of the business planning and stewardship cycle visible to management and that ExxonMobil's commitment to providing opportunities to diverse suppliers is consistently prioritized and actioned. The President's Award celebrates the people and or organizations at the heart of HMSDC. This award will be presented to an individual or organization that has, in the opinion of the president, gone above and beyond to support the council in executing the mission of the organization. The recipients of the president award have always said yes, without hesitation, whenever HMSDC has asked for assistance. This year's recipients stepped up to lead one of our most crucial committees of the council. They took time to meet with the members of their committee, and define a direction that has more than doubled active participation and rejuvenated efforts to define, document new best practices in supplier diversity that will create more traction and opportunities for MBEs. The winners of the President's Award are Monica Campana of Lone Star College and Linda Graves of Centerpoint Energy for their tireless efforts and leadership of the Supplier Diversity Advisory Committee. Please accept this award along with our thanks and gratitude for everything that you do. Well, I saw it as a challenge for me and also as a learning opportunity. I thought that it's gonna be great to get involved in the community and know more about how corporate members and how MBEs work together and how I can help on that. Uh, area and also to bring all my skills to that committee and make everyone involved.
well, it's been difficult to get everyone involved. So my goal would be to get all the corporate members um, bring their minds, their expertise, and everything that they know to this committee and work in the subcommittees that we have and also uh, to help promote all MBEs and help HMSDC to do their work. I always wanted a job with a mission, so that's why I love and enjoy my job at Lone Star because I can, I can help businesses to grow, I can help businesses to get promoted and also to get more business opportunities. So that's uh, something that I really enjoy. Also to interact with people and the community is something that I really love. My main reasons were to support the work and affairs of HMSDC, help in the development and growth of MBEs and engage with other corporate members while we are all working toward the same goals, best in class supply diversity programs and fully support our MBEs. I also felt that my many years in human resources, diversity and inclusion involvement, organizational and interpersonal skills could add value to SEDAC. I want to continue to support HMSDC's corporate strategy, serve SEDAC members, and design toolkits that would provide insight for the right guidance and development of our MBEs. I would like to create some disruption by pursuing the voice of primes to ensure return on investments, challenge our com committee members, and ensure SEDAC serves the intended purpose. I want to continue to support HMSDC's corporate strategy, serve SEDAC members, and design toolkits that provide insight for the right guidance and development of our MBEs. I would like to create some disruption by pursuing the voice of the primes to ensure return on investments, challenge our committee members, and ensure SEDAC serves the intended purpose. Shell's purpose is to provide more and cleaner energy as the world's demand continues to grow. At the same time, society is moving towards a lower carbon energy system to tackle climate change and meet the goal of the Paris Agreement. Today's energy system includes increasing amounts of renewables, but it still largely relies on fuels that release greenhouse gases. This reliance needs to change. Shell is a large company providing some 3% of the world's energy. We want to play our part. This is what's behind our net carbon footprint ambition, to reduce the carbon intensity of our energy products in step with society's progress towards meeting the goal of the Paris Agreement. Our net carbon footprint includes the emissions associated with the energy products we sell. Around 15% of those emissions are caused by getting our products to customers, including during production, manufacture, and transportation. The remaining 85% of emissions are generated by our customers when they use our energy products. So, our ambition includes those emissions too. Achieving our net carbon footprint ambition will mean making our operations more efficient. It would also mean changing the mix of what we sell. More cleaner burning, lower carbon natural gas. More renewable energy and more biofuels. We will also store away more emissions underground and invest in forests and wetlands which absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Our net carbon footprint ambition will mean changing what we sell over time and the shell of the future could be a radically different company as a result. I'm so happy and so proud of Constance. As long as I've been involved with the council, Constance has been around. And I have seen Constance work her 
cut off, man. I mean, for MBEs, I've seen her grow personally, and I'm a better CEO uh, as a result of being uh, uh, interacting with Constance, and our company is better because of Constance. She's always driving you to to uh, uh, to do better, and we've had some challenging conversations, and as a result of those challenging conversations, I've grown. CJ, what a friend, what a friend. Hey, girl, I am absolutely delighted to share this greeting with you. I know that you are doing great things at NMSDC, but of course, HMSDC is always home. So if you ever want to come back, your office is still there. But I talk to you every day, so I know that you are showing up as your best self and doing all that you can to make NMSDC the greatest organization it can be. Thank you, my friend. Continue to do well. Love you, girl. I was Constance's first babysitter at the council. Just kidding. Uh, I have known Constance a long time since she started, and I truly think she was just, just 18 when she started. It's, that's my recollection anyway. And I remember many of the times her, her first learning, like any new employee, uh, being a little innocent to coming forward with the maturity that she brought and her advancement and working with her on a number of different things. She has a lot of knowledge. She has a lot of care for our MBE community. And I wish you the very best in your new role. And I hope to see you again soon. Hey, Constance, we've worked with you for so many years. Um, you've been a vital part of the HMSDC community. And we wish you so well on your new journey with NMSDC. Thank you for all the things that you've done for the organization and for the community. And we know that you're going to continue being dynamic in everything that you do. Congratulations. Constance Jones, congratulations. I wish you so much success in all that you do. Know that you have impacted me, all those that are around the Houston ecosystem, and we so appreciate you. Constance, congratulations. Continued success in everything that you do. Constance is an amazing, amazing individual. And I'm probably old enough to be her mom or very close to it. And But I learned so much from her. She's just brilliant. And um, she's probably one of the kindest individuals I've ever met. I love Constance. And I'm so excited for this new journey she's on. Constance, I'm excited for you, your move. I wish you well. I hope nothing but the best for you. It's been a joy working with you over these years, like about 20 plus. So again, congratulations. Hey Constance, David Bosk is here. We, we miss you, but uh, we, we wish you luck on your uh, next endeavor. You've, you've definitely been part of uh, my life for a number of years since I moved to Houston in 1995 and have, have always been there uh, for me. and whether it's here local at the local level in Houston, now at the, at the national level, but you've really made an impact, inspired not only myself, but a lot of other uh, companies here in Houston. I know you're going to crush it and rock it uh, in your new position. Best of luck to you and, uh, and Godspeed. Hey Constance, uh, Mike Griffin here with Omni4 Solutions. Uh, sorry I didn't get a chance to really get to know you more, but I enjoyed the calls that we were on and the interaction that we had. You have great energy. Um, I only wish I had all that energy, and I wish you the best in the future, and you're going to do a great job. Constance, I'm going to miss you so much. I remember in our orientation, you were just, you were giving it to us. You were authentic. That black girl magic was on point. I could not stop laughing during the whole of the orientation. You've made referrals to our business, and I'm just going to miss you so much. And I'm, I'm proud of you and thankful that I've had an opportunity to know you. I've known Constance for about 20 plus years and we were both about five and eight when we met, but um, I have enjoyed working with you the last 20 years and I just wanted to tell you again, congratulations. I know we said goodbye earlier, but um, I want you to know that you'll always be part of the HMSDC family. You'll always be part of the staff. I know it's been hard for you not to call us, but I want you not to worry about that because we're going to call on you and we're going to call on you often. So we thank you for um, all of your support over the years for going to the national office, for helping them to understand what we do here in the field. And we wish you a lot of luck, a lot of love. 
um, and know that you'll always be part of the HMSDC family. Mwah. I remember Constance from the first time uh, I went and signed up. She's happy hair for HMSDC. She was the point of contact. Uh, little did I know that she was running the whole operation and just her energy, uh, how she kind of held my hand throughout that process. I think she was a She's Happy Hair customer as well. So that always helped out as well. But uh, when I think about Constance, I think about black excellence. You know, I think about the natural effortless uh, beauty and resilience of a black woman, you know, in a professional environment, getting it done, having that upbeat attitude and going over and beyond to make sure that she's meeting expectations and looking out for each and every company that signs up with the HMSDC. So uh, Constance, great job. We miss you. Constance, I still cannot believe that you are gone. I wish you nothing but the best. You have been so instrumental in helping me throughout the years with my business. I appreciate you so much. And I wish you the very best in your new role with NMSDC. Hi, Constance. Hey, this is your friend, Tony Sherman. I just wanted to wish you all the luck in the world. I know you're gonna do well. You don't need luck because just the energy that follows you is just makes you successful. And I know that you're going to be successful in your new uh, job and your new venture. Uh, good, good luck. God bless you. Thank you for all the time that uh, we've worked together and uh, uh, Godspeed. I've never met Constance in person, of course, since we recently got certified uh, this year. Uh, I did have uh, several phone conversations with her, uh, including email exchanges. And, and at the end of our certification process, process, I had to apologize to her because I, I knew I was a bugaboo. But she was extremely patient uh, and helpful and got us to the finish line. So uh, thank you, Constance. I uh, appreciate all you've done uh, for HMSDC uh, and our company in particular, and wish you all the best going forward. Kim. You've been with BP a long time now. You've learned a lot and certainly you've shared a lot. And for that, I'm thankful. It has truly been a joy to get to know you and to work with you, to share insights and gain insights from you. So thank you so much for all that you've done. I'm certain you are preparing to move on to bigger and better things, but please know that the work you do has impacted people around the globe. And again, for that, I say thank you, my friend. Be well. Man, it's been an honor to share the same space with Kimberly Duck. Uh, when you walk into the room and, and you look across the room and say, oh, that's Kimberly, it's about to be on. So uh, I've enjoyed every uh, moment and every opportunity I've had to sit at a table with her, to even just talk to her. So I enjoy uh, the presence of Kimberly Duck. Kimberly, I mean, Kimberly strikes me as a person who is very strategic. And I know just from my personal interactions with her, extremely committed to the mission of growing minority-owned businesses. And one thing about Kimberly is that uh, she forces you to be prepared. So when I come to talk to Kimberly, you know, I don't come to talk to her without being prepared to talk specifically about uh, potential opportunities and then to ask her how we can improve, you know, what we're doing. So I would say she's been a leader for sure uh, in the MBE space. And I know that she's committed to helping to grow minority-owned businesses. Kimberly. I've so enjoyed working with you over the years. Uh, we haven't seen each other much in the last few, but I've always enjoyed the collaborations with you. You bring a lot of talent, a lot of knowledge, and much care. And when we've worked together, you have really provided a lot of knowledge. And so you're a hard worker, and I hope that you do really well as you move along with your next adventures. Kimberly, I am going to miss you so much. It has been an absolute pleasure working with you all of these years. I appreciate the support of you and the rest of the BP team. You've been a loyal client. You've helped me grow. You've trusted me. And I am so grateful for everything that you've done. I wish you nothing but the absolute best in this new phase of your life. So take care. And I will hopefully see you soon. Kimberly Duck. My heart just sank when you told me that you were gonna retire. And I thought that we needed to at least have this moment to celebrate you, um, celebrate all the work and accomplishments you've done in supplier diversity for your support over the years, and to let you know that you're always part of the HMSDC family. 
Um, I know you thought I was joking, but I was serious. We're like the mob. You're like never out of the family. So we're going to be calling on you to come back, provide your wisdom and support to all of our MBEs and to us as a council. Um, we're going to miss you. We love you so much um, and we wish you the best and know that you'll always be part of HMSDC. Kimberly, what is to say? Every time I think about Kimberly, I just see this glow and a big smile. Uh, she always seems so very happy. The other thing is uh, she's willing to take time to talk to you and to really make you feel like she's genuinely um, concerned and helpful to you. And I just love that about you. I wish you well, Kimberly. Hey, Kim, I don't know what to say. You know, you are an extended, an extension of me. Um, Kim and I, we've been in the pipeline for so long. We always engage um, in these efforts together. We talk all the time. Um, we respect each other's privacy as far as organizations, but we have this energy and this passion um, for really being able to provide wonderful services for Shell and on, on your half on, for BP. So congratulations for all the things you've done for um, BP and all the things you will continue to do in life because I know you have so much passion. I will miss seeing you, but I will continue to stay connected. Well wishes, all the best, and congratulations for a job well done. Take care. As we bring day one Roger Awards to a close, we have a number of people that we need to thank. First, let me extend our sincere thanks to our morning keynote, Russell Westbrook III. I would also like to thank the members of Expo 2020 Steering Committee and the HMSCC staff. They have worked very hard over the past 12 months under the superb leadership of Tony Samper of American Services and Ruby Reynolds of GHG Corporation. Let's give them all a round of applause. On behalf of the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council, we commend those of you that have received corporate and MBE awards. You are a testimony to the capabilities of minority businesses and the mutual benefits of advocating a strong results-oriented approach to minority business development. I hope you see why you simply can't separate HMSDC from business growth in Houston and beyond. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us for uh, today's uh, Day One Rigel Awards. I want to ask that you all now proceed to the exhibit hall for our trade show, which will be open uh, for the next two hours. So um, we hope that you're able to uh, join um, all and visit all of our exhibitors as you would in person. And um, I hope you enjoyed this morning. So thank you. We'll continue with the agenda for the rest of the day. Know that on the platform, if you go to the uh, event agenda button, you can see the activities in which rooms you're supposed to be in. So if you're having uh, any questions or issues, make sure that you contact our help desk and we'll see you on the trade show floor. <laughs>